Hi guys, I'm Maylin Dovan, certified athletic therapist and founder of Rehab U Movement and Performance Therapy. And yes, I'm going to talk about bands and knees again. It's my hot topic of late. So as you know, and, and as you've probably seen in one of my previous capsules, and if you haven't, uh, head to the blog to have a look at that capsule. Um, a common fix for knee valgus is placing a band between the knees. So a lot of people, uh, if they see knees caving in during squats, uh, will place a band between the knees to cue people to push the knees out. Um, a couple of problems with this, and, and I'm not going to go through the entire thing again, but um, some studies have actually shown that placing a band around the knees actually increases uh, frontal plane projection of the knee, particularly if people are not used to squatting with a band between the knees. And ironically, that's where we use it the most is when we see knees caving in in beginners with squats and we'll use the band to cue that. So a lot of the times the problem is that one, people are not used to that um, and they don't have the abduction strength to actually resist the band. So we're kind of doing the opposite of what we want to do. Now, I always explain that the knee being an intermediate joint, it actually depends on the foot and the hip for its optimal alignment. Uh, I've talked about the importance of the foot before, also in previous capsules, where I talk about how if the foot uh, hyperpronates or if, if your individual doesn't control pronation enough, well, with that pronation, you will get tibial internal rotation and you will get the knee caving in and hip, uh, the hip uh, adducting and internal rotation at the hip as well. So if you're seeing knees cave in, then you certainly should screen the foot as well. Now, as far as the hip, we're going to come back to this exercise that we had André Félix doing where another, um, aside from squats, another use of the band that people often have is using it on a split squat, for example. If you see someone who has the knee caving in when they're doing lunges, people will use an elastic band that pulls the knee in to exaggerate that fault so people push the knee out, okay? So again, same issue here with the foot. You need to also start with the foot because if he's got so much resistance here that he's trying to push his knee out and he's falling onto the outside of his foot, he's gonna lose that foot contact, okay? Now the other thing is that this is really working on trying to get an external rotation torque, okay? But we forget that for optimal alignment of the knee, we need that foot stability in the frontal plane, okay? And we need stability at the hip in the frontal plane as well, which means we need hip abduction torque, okay? So instead of working on an external rotation component like this, Let's use exercises that work on hip abduction torque and allow you to connect also the foot with the hip, okay? Because with the foot, as you resist pronation and you work into the ground into plantar flexion, inversion, and external rotation, you'll get that connection with the hip, okay? So one exercise that I like to use a lot, we can get you out of there, to work on this is a modified stork exercise. So what we'll do is we'll have André Félix lean his hip into the ball and he's gonna stand just so scoot that foot over a little bit yeah so he wants to stand in a straight line where he's not leaning into the ball he's just holding it against the squat rack and now he's gonna lift off the inside foot and he's gonna hinge at the hips so he's gonna hinge forward a little bit so hinge the hips back good and unlock the knee a little bit good and now he's working on getting that foot in good position keeping that knee in line with the second and third toe and because he's holding the ball against the squat rack he's getting that hip abduction torque that's what will get your glute medius because remember that the glute medius which is always the exercise that people are trying to target with a band at the knees the glute medius is a hip abductor in any position of the hip, meaning regardless if you're in hip extension or flexion, your glute med will have an abduction torque. Okay, so working it in that frontal plane, working on hip abduction torque is a better solution for that knee alignment. Okay, another exercise that you could use once that's acquired, so an exercise that would be more challenging is a single leg front loaded hold. So dumbbells loaded at the shoulders and he's doing just a single leg hold and again working on that foot stability, working on that knee alignment and because he's standing on the one leg, getting that hip abduction work, that hip abduction torque of the glute med. Okay, you can drop those. <laughs> All right, so to recap, 
Uh, bands around the knees, so first of all, whenever you're using a band, probably one, the one most important thing I would say, if you do decide to use it, then uh, the resistance of the band is going to be really important. You're not using a band to strengthen, you're using a band to cue. And if the resistance is too much, you're going to get the opposite effect. So that study I was telling you about where people that are not used to having a band around the knees for squats and don't have the abduction strength to resist the band, they, they will actually increase, it will actually increase their, their knee valgus, okay? Um, same thing with if you're doing those kind of lunges with the band to exaggerate the knee caving in, you want to use the band as a cue to exaggerate the fault, to cause someone to correct the fault, which is not a horrible strategy to start with, but again, if the band is too much resistance, they will overcorrect, they may compensate, they may compensate via the foot, so just beware of that. The other thing is that we don't always only want to work that external rotation component, we need to be working hip abduction torque. And if we really want to stimulate the glute med, that's what we should be working on as well. So something like the modified stork exercise and the single leg holds will more interestingly work that, and more effectively work that hip abduction torque. And last thing, of course, remember to go to the foot. So if you, if you have that foot that pronates, that pronation is going to cause internal rotation, it's going to cause internal rotation at the hip as well and the knee to cave in. So working on that foot to stability is also an element to work on. So remember the knee is in between the foot and the hip, so it depends on optimal function of the foot and the hip for its optimal alignment.